In this video, I'm going to cover editing of 3D solids. Now, just to review in my previous video of creating 3D solids, remember that if it's a simple form, like a box, you can use the grips on the edges in order to adjust the shape larger or smaller. And then you can also use the properties palette and look at its length, width, and height fields here and type in specific numbers that you want. Now, as I pulled those grips out, I also could have typed in the amount of uh, size that I wanted to add to its existing size. So that way you could be precise while using the grips. Now, there are some more advanced tools that are still very commonly used and important to know. Uh, for example, on your solids tab in your ribbon, you have the union, subtract, and intersect for working with 3D solids. And these are considered Boolean operations. And that word might not mean much to you, but you may have heard about that word in math class many years ago um, because they're math terms, really. But they work with 3D solid modeling as well. So the union allows you to merge two solids together. And I just started the command and I select whatever solids I want and then hit space or enter. You can see how the overlapping lines have gone away so that this is now one object. Now, what you have to be careful with in using these commands is don't uh, use union unless you're really sure that you need to union something. It's not always necessary to merge the two objects into one. The reason I say that is because now that I select it, you can see that I lose the grips. I don't have that easy ability to modify it that way anymore. In the properties palette, I lose those fields for length, width, and height. I can't modify it that way anymore. So it becomes more challenging to work with. And then if you change your mind and you want to split these back into two boxes, well, it's not really that easy to do. You have to slice it up into pieces and, and then try to work with it that way. So I don't use union very often because I can leave it as two separate pieces like this and it's still going to work fine, still looks fine. Uh, so it's not always necessary to union something. Now, subtract, on the other hand, is something I use a lot more often. And that's because you want to often cut pieces out of other pieces in order to make different shapes. So that might mean you want to basically like draw a hole through something. You might want to put a square hole through something in order to create a window, something like that. Or maybe you're just trying to make a more complex form. So I could, let's say I wanted to subtract the one box from the other to take the corner out. I could do a polyline and then extrude it, but maybe this is easier for me. So I can hit subtract. And then you're going to select the larger mass that you want to keep. It's not always a larger one, but uh, most of the time it ends up being that way. So let's say I want to keep this one, and then I want to subtract this one from it in order to kind of bite the corner off. So I select the one that I'm trying to maintain, and then I hit space or enter, and then I select the one that I'm trying to subtract and then hit space or enter. You can see how it's bit the corner off, essentially, of that object. So that's what subtract will do. So it's great for punching holes through things, or if you're trying to make a more complex form, you can uh, make a temporary object, uh, such as that box that overlaps with the object that you were trying to cut the corner off of, for example. So that's how the uh, subtract will work. And now the intersect will do what the little picture shows. It keeps um, the space where the two objects overlap. It's not real often I use this, but once in a while. So intersect, and then you select your objects, and then hit enter or space, and you're done. So all three of those are very easy to use. Subtract just has uh, a little bit more steps because uh, you have to be clear about which object you're keeping and then which objects you're removing. Um, because you can do more than one object uh, in that process. Now, another object, or excuse me, another command that's very easy to work with and handy is slice. So let's say that you did union something together and then you changed your mind. You can use slice to kind of break it up into sections again or parts. So you hit slice and then it asks you at the command line, select objects to slice. So I can click an object like that. And then when you're done selecting objects, hit space or enter. And now it asks for a start point on the slicing plane. So you kind of have to think about uh, if you're going to cut through this with a giant knife, uh, clicking three object snaps along that plane where the knife is going through the object or the mass. So I'm going to turn on my O snaps for this and then select uh, the midpoint on this side, the midpoint on this edge, and the midpoint on this edge. 
and then it asks specify a point on desired side to keep or you can keep both sides by um, hitting space or enter to accept the default response. A lot of times I have this hit space and then I can see how it worked and delete the one I don't want. So I'm just going to hit space. Now you can see that this has been broken up into two separate pieces and I can move one away. I, I can, you know, slide this one off as a separate piece. I can erase one if I want. So that works very easily. So there's a separate piece there. So I could have uh, clicked on the one that I wanted to keep if I wanted to specifically erase one half or just tap space or enter and it will keep both. And then you can always erase one manually afterwards or move them around or do whatever you need. So if I do union something and change my mind, a slice is a lot of times an easy way to go back. The problem is if I was unioning these two pieces, there's not one easy slice. You'd have to slice it a couple times, end up with more pieces, and then try to reassemble it again. Now you'll notice that even though this was a box and I sliced it, I still lose the grips on the edges and I lose the dimensions in the properties palette as far as length, width, and height. So as soon as you start modifying your 3D solids in, uh, in other ways, such as subtract or slice, then you're going to lose uh, those easy editing options. So now if I wanted to make this box bigger, you know, what would I do? Well, you could put another box next to it and then kind of union the two together. That would be one way. Your other option is to use uh, some of the face editing tools, such as from the pull down here for where it says extrude faces. So you have extrude, taper, move, copy, offset, delete, rotate, color. Some of these are hardly ever used, but ones like offset or extrude are great when you want to just make an object a little larger. So I'm going to hit extrude faces and then select the face that I want to extrude. And you, if you click on the edge, you're going to often select two edges or two faces, excuse me, because there's two faces that are bordering at that edge. So if you select it on the edge, then you would normally have to remove one face. If you're only trying to uh, move one face, obviously you could move both at the same time. But if I'm just trying to raise the top of this box, then I don't really need to have that back face selected. So I can hold shift and select uh, that face to remove it. Or I could also do the remove option at the command line and that would also work. All right, so then uh, when I'm done selecting faces, I hit enter space to move on. And now it asks for the height of extrusion. So I can type in how far I want that to be raised and it will raise it that amount. There is one more intermediate question that it's asking me, and that's the angle of taper. So I'm just going to hit enter to accept the default of zero. And now it has raised that face by two feet. Let me do that again because I uh, didn't explain that real clearly. So I'm going to hit escape to start my command over. Do extrude faces. Select my face. I'm going to click on it in the center of it now. So you have the option clicking on it in the middle and it selects only the face that you click in the middle of, the one that's um, on the front or the top closest to where you click. Because when I click here, I could be trying to pick the back face, but it's picking the one that's closest to me as the viewer. If I click on the edge, then you may need to remove faces because it will normally pick two. And then when you're done selecting faces, hit space or enter. Then you're typing in how far you want that face to move, such as two feet enter. Then it asks you the angle of taper. If you want to leave it angled the way it is, just press enter to accept zero. And now it has raised that face by two feet. Now, these commands are all kind of linked. Um, and at the command line, you can see that it's still active, but it has reverted back to giving you the options of extrude or move or rotate, offset, tape or copy, etc. So the command stays active, but it switches to a mode where you can access any of those face editing options. So if I want to extrude again, I can type E for extrude, and then it goes back to where I was, which is select faces again. So now I'm going to do this one more time. Select my face, hit enter to move on. And now I'm going to type a negative two, or how about negative three feet, and enter, and then enter for my taper. So if you want to move the face down or in other words, to make the object smaller, then you type a negative distance. If 
you wanted to make an object larger, then you type a positive distance. And that's true for some of the other commands in the uh, face editing options. Offset faces, move faces, and extrude faces are all very, very similar. I actually use offset faces most of the time just because that's what I'm used to, but you can use extrude or move as well. Taper faces allows you to taper uh, an angled uh, or angle a plane. So let's try that. Taper faces. So when you want to taper your face, you select the face to taper, just like we did with move. Hit space or enter to move on to the next step. And then it asks you for a base point. So you're basically clicking two lines along uh, one of the edges that would be rotated as part of the taper process. So you can start, for example, here and here if you want to tilt that face in or out. And then it asks you for a taper angle. If you indicate a positive angle, then you're going to taper the face in, and a negative angle would taper the face out. So if I'm trying to raise the corner or the edge that's closer to me, then I might do negative 10 and enter, and it has tapered it up uh, to kind of lift that edge closer to me. So that's handy when you have something that is a wedge shape or a bevel edge, something like that. Now you can use commands like fillet on the edges of 3D solids as well, or chamfer. So I can do my fillet command, select an edge, and then type in my radius, like two feet, and then I can hit enter or select more edges. And so now it's rounded that edge off. So that's also very easy to work with. Now, one of the newer options in editing 3D solids is working with sub-objects. So that allows you to basically grab a uh, an vertex point or a corner, an edge or a face, and manipulate it uh, more in a more detailed way than what we used to be able to. So if you hold control and then click on an object's vertex point, edge, or face, you'll see a red grip show up, which is a little odd because traditionally grips used to be blue. Now if I select that grip, you've taken that corner point and you can still pull that and move it out or up or in or wherever you want. So this is kind of a, a trick because before we talked about we lose those basic grips when you start to use these more advanced modification tools, but you can still modify uh, the objects overall size pretty easily this way by using these red grips instead of the blue grips. So again, I hold control and then you select a sub object part like a face, an edge, or a vertex point or corner. And then you see the red grip, grab that red grip and pull it in the direction you want. So I would use my polar if I want to pull this in a straight direction according to my XY plane. So it works a lot like we still have the blue grips, but I could also grab just a specific edge. So in some ways, it's even more powerful in that way. So give that a try as well. Keep in mind, while I'm using these red grips, uh, that red grip shifted along the x-axis, and it's following the x, y, z, u, c, s icon in terms of which direction it's going. So if I want to raise this edge, it's not really doing it. It's sliding it um, horizontally. So just keep that in mind. Your UCS icon will always be um, there to remind you of what direction you can work. So if I want to flip uh, to raise that edge up higher off the ground, I can rotate my UCS icon around my X axis so that my Y is pointing up. And then now when I hold control, grab that edge and then grab that grip. Now I'm actually raising that edge up off the ground. So keep that in mind that that will still be an issue. 